the upper layer of the open ocean is like liquid space. It has no structure, no boundaries, and solid objects are rare. There are some permanent residents, but most swim through, riding to prevailing winds and currents. This world without structure makes for some surprising associations. The pilot fish spends its entire life traveling with much larger fishes, such as the ocean sunfish. Other species are attracted to floating mats of seaweed, drifting logs, and debris. When floating objects, or flotsam, drifts offshore, it provides temporary habitat for surface-dwelling fishes that have adapted to life in the open ocean. Juvenile fish are drawn in, and so are hunters like mahi, wahoo, tuna, and shark. Fishermen have learned to exploit this lure of the flotsam by setting out fish aggregating devices known as fads. In some places, the fads are large buoys anchored in waters thousands of feet deep. They are used by artisanal fishing boats, divers, and recreational fishermen. But industrial fishing companies use fads in a different way, putting out tens of thousands of drifting fads equipped with satellite transmitters and directional beacons so they can keep track of them at sea. Their huge seine nets circle the drifting fads, hauling out everything in the immediate area. While skipjack tuna make up the bulk of these catches, a large number of juvenile big eye and yellowfin tunas are also hauled in. This is a serious problem for future generations of tuna because these young fish are essential to replenishing the population. In addition to tuna, the nets also capture dozens of other species like rays, billfish, sharks, and turtles. Few survive, even if they are dumped back into the sea. And there are other problems. When fish stay with the fads for months on end, migratory patterns may be disrupted. Abandoned or lost fads add even more debris to the rapidly increasing trash problem in the sea. But fad fishing is widespread and growing. Almost one half of the world's tuna is caught using drifting fads. How much it's harming the fishes of the open ocean is still to be determined. Counting how many fads are being used is a step in the right direction. Tuna are prolific fish, remarkable in so many ways, yet catches have reached staggering proportions. If the tuna industry is going to be sustainable, it must be receptive to more scientific input and regulation. Populations of tuna will continue to be threatened if there are no limits on the use of fads. As long as this method of fishing prevails with no regulation, the open ocean ecosystem will be at risk.